Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Caregiving and Entrepreneurship Reimagined Podcast. I am so excited, guys, for today's episode because I have an amazing human being, Rachel, Rebecca Allman. I hope I didn't slaughter it too bad. Um, and she is incredible. She's an entrepreneur. She's had her own experiences with caregiving. So she is going to be helping us break down some simple skills that we have to learn as entrepreneurs. But guys, it's the same as a caregiver. And we really want hope that this episode helps you just feel empowered and less overwhelmed <laughs> with everything that you need to learn as a caregiver. Because guys, the same skills that you learn to become a business owner are very similar to what you need to learn as a caregiver. So Rebecca, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Oh, Melissa, it's great to have me. You didn't get my name too wrong, okay. but I'll correct you. And Thank my, you. Father, my father of blessed memory would have me co correct you. It's Edelman. So Edelman. I'm Rebecca Edelman. And I am just so happy to be here, Melissa. And I do want to say first off that for everyone who's listening, and especially for you, Melissa, um, you know, being able to thrive as a caregiver and also to thrive as an entrepreneur is just, um, it's something to celebrate. So just celebrating that before we even begin our um, compelling conversation is so important is to just take a moment and honor and celebrate just all the ways that you and um, everyone who's attracted to this podcast show, show up. So. Absolutely. Well, obviously, Rebecca, not everyone may be acquainted with your work and your own um, journey and story. So why don't you take a couple minutes to share with our listeners a little bit about who Rebecca is? Well, thank you for thank you for inviting me into that conversation. So, I guess by way of a, a, an introduction, I'm a you know by by profession, I'm a lawyer by trade. I call myself an entrepreneur with a law license. That's really what <laughs> I am. Melissa. So I know you'd appreciate that. So I am. Um, yeah, so I'm a I'm a lawyer by trade, and I I entered into the senior living space, um, the caregiving space, uh, in many many years ago, over three decades ago, and I have been representing caregivers, uh, hospitals, senior living communities, anywhere that healthcare shows up along the continuum. I um, I I show up as either a lawyer or I also have a pretty robust risk management, risk solutions um, component to, to the services I offer. So that's kind of who I am professionally. So every day I am engaging, interfacing with caregivers, uh, with their loved ones, um, with entrepreneurs, of course, because I also, as a lawyer, I help support businesses. I represent businesses. I help small businesses begin uh, and um, have a lot of thought leadership around that. So that's kind of how I show up professionally. And then also because we're all on a, in some ways on a caregiving journey, right? So my caregiving journey, um, you know, I'm one of those sandwich generation people. So I was raising a small child as who's now 22, uh, as my parents were aging. So my father was, um, living with and, you know, going through an experience of the Alzheimer's dementia journey and was uh, at home in assisted living in Michigan, where I'm from. So I was caring for him while my mother was at home. Um, and then my father moved down here. I'm in Memphis um, to, to be with me uh, during his final journey um, to, um, to, to the end of life. So I get to really care for him and be with him on that in that experience. And currently, my mother's in assisted living and lives in assisted living. So I am helping care for my mother uh, in assisted living. So um, it's a real personal, it's very personal, it's professional, but it's also very personal for me. So um, that's, that's a little bit about, that's a little bit about me. Awesome. And I was a sandwich generation caregiver for a while too. Um, the last two years up until July when my father passed away, I was caring for two years. I had my husband I was caring for. We had a four-year-old daughter that we were caring for. Um, and that, well, she's three and between when she was three and four. And then I was caring for my father who was, who was aging and until his death as well. So it, caregiving can come in all sorts of different seasons. 
Um, sometimes it's back to back, like what it's been for me the last four years between my father being a mom, then being a spousal caregiver, then being an aging parent caregiver. So wherever you're at, I hope these tips that we're going to share helps take some of the overwhelm and fear out of them. And my background, y'all, as a professionally, before I became a caregiver and business coach was being a certified nursing assistant for 15 years and working in long-term healthcare facilities. So advocating on behalf of my patients and their families is something that I was very passionate about doing then. And I definitely am passionate about giving you guys the skills and insight of my own journey, both personally and professionally, because the same, a lot of the same skills have transferred over to help you thrive, like Rachel, or excuse me, Rebecca said, in her, um, in her passion for helping other people thrive in their caregiving journey, but from the legal side. So advocation is layered in so many different ways. So we're going to dive into 10 um, skills that you need to learn as a caregiver. And the first one is time management. Y'all, I know it is so tough to figure out how much to get to figure out how to get so many things done in a day I know for me the biggest thing that has helped me is habit stacking like linking a couple things together that I'm doing anyway and linking things that um, don't require a lot of um, brain focus if that makes sense because you know what some there's some things that require a lot of focus that you should do by itself but then if you can kind of multitask and do a couple things um together that really helps so for example in the mornings is when I start my load of laundry for the day I empty and load I empty or reload the dishwasher catch up on hand dishes while I'm getting my daughter through her morning routine because when I come back from taking her to school that's my office time like right now we're as we're recording this conversation this is my office time my daughter's at school so she's taken care of my husband's doing his own thing this is my time to have the house quiet and work and I'm not worrying about housework or laundry or errands or bills or anything right now. This is my focus time to be intentional in my role as a caregiver and a coach. And the same thing is true for you as a caregiver. You know, what can you overlap together as a caregiver um, with your tasks? So Rebecca, I want you to jump in and share about some tasks that you would um, or that you have done in your own, maybe your own journey that really helped you with your time management. Yeah, it's great. And and when we were getting ready for this podcast, I was really excited about this idea. Like we titled it and, you know, we titled it thriving at the intersection of caregiving and entrepreneurship, because so many of the skills that we have as caregivers, some innate, some we have to learn. Um, And the skills that we have as entrepreneurs intersect there's translation there's intersection so as you dive into time management you know effectively managing our time juggling a variety of tasks deadlines um caregiving do you know but and responsibilities and then balancing our caregiving duties for me time management sort of monotasking which is what you're talking about your focus time which is also my focus time today with you that kind of monotasking versus we'll call it multitasking um, is really about planning for me. So for me, I have, you know, in terms of caregiving for my, my, my family, caregiving for myself, let's not leave ourselves out of the equation. We often do, but we're also self caregiving, right? And we're going to talk about that here in a minute. Um, So for me, it's all about planning. Um, I plan on Sundays. I plan out my week on Sundays, all my responsibilities. I have them in different silos or buckets. Um, I then look through and for the planning, I I plan out my day. I plan out my hours. I plan out my tasks. Um, Some of them, and then I start to see like where they do intersect. Like if I have to go to a doctor's appointment or I have a meeting, that is, you know, out of, you know, 20 minutes out of town, is there a way that I can plan in some events, some other meeting? Can I plan my phone calls? So as a, as a lawyer, you know, I'm, I'm, I spend a lot of time fielding calls, making calls, wanting to make calls. So I will, I will plan those calls out if I know I have time in the car, for example. So For me, time management, both in caregiving 
And the intersection there in the translation is really about planning. So that's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's for me how it works. And it kind of goes hand in hand with our sort of the second um, skill set, which is adaptability, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, I will say too, like, when you're planning, I want to go back to the planning for a little bit, because like, yeah. in terms of tools, everyday tools that are not hard for you to use, your phone calendar, your Google calendar, I live by that. And what the cool thing is, what you can do with especially Google Calendar is you can color code and you can also set alerts as many times as you want. So for me, I like what's coming down the pipeline a day before. That's how I run. So, um, mm -hmm. for example, I got a notification and at, uh, at the exact time that this, that this call is being recorded yesterday to remind me I have a meeting tomorrow. And then I got another reminder an hour before just to remind me. So that might be too much for you, maybe, or maybe you need more. Think about that. What can you do? How can you leverage technology and digital tools to help yeah, you? Yeah, great, your great point, Melissa. Yes, that can help you. And with adaptability, when something um, doesn't um, quite go as planned, that's where I want you thinking about like, okay, how can I do, how could I maybe do this task in a different way? So maybe if I, if it's business related, uh, I might work from my phone that day and just kind of catch up on things that way. If it's a caregiving task, same thing. Maybe if it's if you have some forms that you need to finish, can you take them with you in the car while you're waiting for your kids to get out of school or out of their dentist appointment or something? How can you kind of blend and tweak and adapt when things come up? Because there are things that are kind of going to come up, whether um, it's on the business side where you're, where meetings get canceled or moved or the schedule, like your kids, get, your kids don't make it through their full school day because they call and they're, and they come home sick. And so then you have to start caring for them as well. Or maybe your loved one just has a really bad day and you don't get a lot done um, on the business side because you're focused on the caregiving side. So how, so it being, being flexible, being open to it's, I do recommend having some sort of schedule and tools to help you keep to help stay organized but help but hold it open and open hand yeah because That's you can't <laughs> yeah you can't i mean control it's, everything things are going to happen no. and it's not your fault it's not your loved one's fault it's not your client's fault y'all you got to just hold it open open-handed for being adaptable i think when i think of adaptability that's the main thing i want you to focus on the most just be flexible roll with the punches and as you go pay attention to how you like to do things or what you could do like for the next time you know as a business owner i really like having creating templates and notion for my tasks so every time i go down to do that task again i have a i have a checklist already for every time i do that same thing as a caregiver so maybe it's creating um in terms of managing your loved one's illness maybe it's having a a folder in Google Docs or on your phone or something where you can come back to it that you have accessible so you can easily write down new notes or reference other things. You know, how can you make it easier to where you're not having to always carry a big notebook? I mean, I personally like to write by hand and I have a notebook for my husband, but if that's too cumbersome for you, how can you do it digitally so where you can keep documenting information about what you're seeing with yeah. your loved one and then being able to more importantly reference it in a um, import in a in, in a situation where it maybe it is a follow up appointment and your doctor has questions, their doctor has questions, or it is a, an emergency situation. You know, just being able to yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. There's so many different ways that you can do that, and yeah, that I, and the planning ahead. and the systems. You know, and, and you know, with being adaptable, adaptable and planning out your time, that segues into your stress level. It helps yeah, keep so. your stress down when you have a yeah. plan. And just, and I think just to sort of put a little bow on the adaptability, I think it's fair to say that, you know, we always have to expect the unexpected. We should, ex in some ways, just expect something's going to go wrong. And so in that way, we can always sort of have ourselves prepared for a creative solution. And I think that's important. And then to your point on stress management, which is our third skill set here, 
is, you know, the demands of entrepreneurship and caregiving are, there's no question, they're, they're stressful. And I think developing coping mechanisms, um, being able to maintain, you know, our emotional well-being, it's so critical for both roles. And so for me, again, some of it is planning, making sure I plan for get, you know, have my toolbox ready while I'm planning so that I can take out of my toolbox all the tools that I have for my stress management, which includes making sure I get to my classes, my yoga classes, make sure I get to make sure my, you know, I make time for my meditation in the morning and I have time, whether that means waking up a little bit earlier or shifting my day a little, um, making sure I have time for exercise. I am unwavering in my commitment to physical movement. And so that is, you know, prioritizing that into the schedule. Also, of course, you know, good nutrition and being around people who I care about. It's so easy as an entrepreneur to become isolated, you know, in some ways, you know, we're in our job and we're focused on our entrepreneurial goal sets, mm -hmm. but we've got our also, and we have our, our loved one we're caring for. Um, and so it, it's easy to, um, to sort of fall into this sort of isolationist. And so making sure that we do things like this, connecting yeah. with people and being Absolutely. with people that we, being with people that we care about, having a good laugh, humor is the ticket. Having a good laugh, that will get you there every time, stress management. Yeah. And I will say with the stress management piece, something else that, you know, besides, you know, the basics, you know, mind, body, soul of, you know, nutrition, sleep, exercise, or movement, and then spiritual, whether it's meditation, practicing your faith, journaling, there's so many things, creative outlets, like for me, I love to knit, love knitting. So picking up those knitting needles and doing something for others gets me off of myself and everything else going on for someone else. I will say the next one is a support that coincides with that, a support network, whether that's a caregiving support group, whether that's um, your congregation of faith, whether it's family or friends, whether it's a uh, whether it's um, maybe a club, you know, something fun, maybe it's a for so for me, maybe a knitting club, whatever you can do to support yourself with people around you to help offset the stress. So things are taken care of where you're nurturing your mind, body and soul. But also, maybe it does involve if you're at that season where like we talked about, maybe your loved one is to the point where they where it is too much for you to do the basic caregiving tasks, maybe you need uh, a bath aid from home health to come in twice a week to help with bathing maybe you need or maybe you need someone there um once a week so you can get out of the house to yoga and then you'll yeah. have peace of mind knowing that a medical professional is there for an hour because I did do home health for an hour or not an hour excuse me a year when I was a CNA guys and there were times I had cases where I was doing bathing vitals feeding help supervising the administration of medications to make sure they were doing it properly and safely other times I was just there until the family got home for that two hour window. So if something happened, an adult was there and could call 911 or whatever. So think about that. Are you, where are you at in your caregiving uh, season journey? Um, is it, are you in a situation where you have a high functioning loved one, like my husband, where it's only, it's only when he has seizures that the triage is heavy um, and the caregiving support is heavy where I have to do a lot for him. Or is it, or are you dealing with someone who is bedridden and it's physically exhausting and you do need the support of home health or hospice, or maybe even, you know, a long-term care facility or assisted living, you know, it's important to look at that. Okay. I know none of us want to have just dump our loved ones there, but for some of us, it, we can't be a caregiver at home. I'm fortunate that I could help care for my grandmother. I'm fortunate that I can care for my husband. I, I'm fortunate that I could help care for my, um, for my father and he cared for my mother till she passed away so because uh, and, and and honoring their wishes of not wanting to be in a facility that's another thing to think about but at the same time you know as much as we want to honor their wishes how, what is the what is the what is the uh, the line in the sand though for you it's not worth it for you to push yourself beyond what you can handle so how can you bring in that support network to help you with the stress because mm -hmm. that also ties in with the communication bit. You know, you have to be com communicating what your mm -hmm. needs are. And mm -hmm. also, it's, it's just as important that you're communicating the needs for your loved one. And it's the same thing of what we do every day as entrepreneurs. We are, we are doing something to yes. communicate their needs and advocate and, for them. 
and in, and in different ways. And those yeah. communication skills, which is our our fourth area, those communication skills come in a lot of different ways. It's not just verbal. It could be written. Can yeah. be use our body language. Um, could use. I mean, there's so many different communication tools. Mm -hmm. But it's even effective, legally, you know, yeah. And just legally. you know, yeah. we communicate with our clients. We communicate with our our you know our family, our partners, our employees. I mean, we engage in so much communication all day that that skills to talk about is a skill that translates mm -hmm. uh, and that intersects communication, I think, um, yeah. you know, and being able to communicate with healthcare professionals, set expectations, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, these are and all. I will say, um, to the because I'm just getting this buzz in my brain, sorry, the legal side, you know, their living will, having power of attorney. Basic legal documents, because, you know, I know we don't like to think about the end, but we never know when the end is coming. Y'all, I am so thankful that we got him on my dad on hospice because he actually passed away a week after we got him on hospice. And that just a few months prior, we had actually gotten we finally got the paperwork with his um, with the power of attorney and his living will yeah. getting it notarized for the state that we we're in because it was a little behind. So, you know, that's another thing. Look at those legal documents. If you haven't started, started. And even if you have copies, because this is what we ran into with my dad is like he had a he had a living will, but it was notarized in the state of Indiana when I was like three. And it was also like the um, executor and like um, legal guardian because that was it was based off for of when I was a minor. Obviously, that's not that wasn't true with me but now being yeah. a grown woman and in my 30s. So you need to. So besides the uh, so for the written aspect, frequently, both in terms of like your progress notes or, um, you know, medical history of like what's happened with like medications, treatments, procedures, diagnoses, legal, legal wise, same thing. Look at the dates and, and the information of who is doing what, who needs to be removed that because I had to do some of that when we were getting stuff set up for me to be daddy's power of attorney um and and also adjust his legal will because yeah. the stuff he'd done three years ago or three years prior to his death all had my mom's name on it but she died away two years prior to that so you got to look at um that pretty frequently to make sure that it's all up to date and then also make sure that you take that legal those legal agreements and have them scanned at the hospital so that way whatever hospital they use have that on hand because they pull that they look at that you know they you yeah. know they need to have copies of that well, and to that point, our fifth skill set, I'm going to change it up a little bit. We talked about financial literacy, but I'm going to call it legal and financial literacy to kind of expand on your comments, your excellent comments, Melissa, because, you know, between durable powers of attorney, powers of attorney for health care, post forms, you know, DNR forms, Yes. All of these legal yes. status, yes, everything code says. So all of that comes, I think, under the heading of just legal and then also financial literacy. And you know, again, as entrepreneurs, we have those skills, right? We talk about handling budgets, financial statements, um, resource allocation. How about that for an intersection with caregiving? Mm -hmm. Resource allocation. And we have to manage resources, medical expenses, you know, all of that insurance information. Yes, that's a big so thing. that that I think from the standpoint of sort of identifying the intersection between caregiving and entrepreneurship, legal and financial literacy can't be understated. I mean, we we have these sort of mapped out on a top 10. But if we had to then reorder them, I would put that really high at the top. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because you never know, like it goes with that thing of being being prepared for the unexpected. You yes. never know when you're, you're when you're um, going to have to call 911 and your loved one's going to have a massive medical emergency. So that's why I say, like, I tell my clients um, uh, to create, I really push having those medical binders, you know, yeah. where you have everything sectioned out by dates of diagnosis, um, dates of procedures, all contact information for all your doctors, because everything's digital now um legal documents the basics power of attorney executive director living will um and all allergies medications just having it ready to go because then you don't have to think about it because there is a lot of information that you do have with your loved one's illness over a span of months years weeks and when you're in a medical emergency you're so on heightened alert for trying to get your loved one the help they need 
the way you can help the EMTs and then in turn the hospital the most is by having as much information already ready to go for them to scan and then boom, you're right, you're off to the races. And that yeah. expedites their ability to stabilize your loved one a lot faster. And again, too, like if it gets to the nitty gritty world, it is life and death and you're having to call the shots and you don't want the state moving in, having those legal documents, you know, power of attorney, living will, those legal documents ready to go. And again, guys, remember, we're not trying to scare you. We just want you to be prepared. And things can change too with the documents. Maybe your loved one changes their mind about something or yeah. someone that you have as a medical, oh, yeah. as a con. We, yeah, we can you, change it. I'd rather you, you have something it. written and started than starting from scratch or trying to play catch up when it's mm -hmm. too late. Okay. So, you know, while your loved ones of sound mind is something to think about, do they want to be cremated? Do they want to be, do they, do they, um, want to, a funeral service who do they want at their funeral service what's what hymns do they want you know all those details write them down somewhere now and then you can always come back to them and tweak as you go and yeah. also with and also um the next one is networking this is so important if you don't have this is why getting help from experts like us can be so powerful because like i understand that whether you're just a new a rookie entrepreneur or you're a rookie caregiver it it can feel scary it can feel scary about what do i do what questions do i ask getting around like-minded people around you that have been through the situation so that's why for caregiving support groups are huge that's why um asking family or friends can be huge because maybe you maybe this is your first rodeo dealing with an estate or dealing with the loss of a loved one or caregiving for a loved one and they can open your eyes about hey you're struggling with trying to find medical equipment i use this for my mom go ask you know go go check them out here's their contact information so little things like that whether yeah. it's online um i know sometimes social media gets a bad rap but guys there's facebook is a gold mine i've seen a lot more facebook groups pop up for different things obviously they weren't targeted towards my specific husband's illness or my dad's health issues but look for there even if it's virtual because i understand with some illnesses we can't go out because of protecting our loved one's compromised immune system but still there's other ways other avenues to network whether it's virtual or in person so think about it how can we get more resources whether it's looking and, for support whether it's and also, uh, illness anything yeah and also to that point i mean we live in a global, we live in a global space now. Like these issues that we all have are shared as caregivers and entrepreneurs everywhere in the world. So there, you know, be thinking big, like be thinking broad and big and global because, you know, we can connect in so many different ways now, like you said. And I, I think that's that networking that kind of goes hand in hand with the support group um and you know um stress management all of these also intersect stress management they all, they all do and 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 again this is this next one i think is also a big intersection which we've we sort of have touched on in some ways but we haven't named it yet which is problem solving so mm -hmm. we tackle so many challenges in business every day i i it's whatever time it is We've had several hours into our day already. I'm already tackling all sorts of challenges. And caregivers also finding solutions um, and problem solving to caregiving related issues, just like our entrepreneurial issues, our business issues is so key. And it's for me, and as a lawyer, it comes, it comes fa fairly naturally, you know, because I'm an analytical thinker. So I think problem solving, strategizing, Using like creative problem solving, analytics, analytical thinking, I think is, is again, like a really strong intersection. Um, if you're encountering, you know, a problem with your loved one who needs care in a certain way, really draw on your skills as an entrepreneur. Think analytically, think strategically, whiteboard it, you know, whatever. Yeah. Maybe just whiteboard it in your mind. Reach out to... Um, again, you know, don't forget, you don't have to problem solve alone. No, Go absolutely. to people who can uh, provide you with some ideas about how to solve to a problem. So that problem solving, don't underestimate your, or your superpowers, right? That you already have to problem solve. Because as an entrepreneur and a caregiver, 
that's really what it is, is problem solving is like, a, you know, your superpower. We're doing it all yeah. the time. Yeah. And so anyway, I think that's a, that's really an unimportant quality that it, that translates between caregiving and entrepreneurship really yeah. translates. Yeah. And empathy guys, oh. we're, you know, we're empathetic with our, with our customers, our clients of, of what they're going through in our skill set of how we're trying to coach and teach them and get them from struggling to thriving. And as a caregiver, I want you to think about empathy two ways. One, obviously with your loved one. I mean, you obviously do because you love them. You've agreed to take care of them. You're wanting to do as much. You're wanting to honor their wishes. Okay. I know you're empathetic, but I want you to be a little empathetic and compassionate with yourself. Okay. Yes. Caregiving is stressful. Just like we know entrepreneurship is stressful and hard. It's not for everybody. If everyone was, um, if, if, if the right thing to do was for everyone to be an entrepreneur, would be seeing a lot more people on the internet, y'all. Okay. But at the same time, caregiving is not for everyone. You know, not, not every student that I trained, I got, when I was a senior CNA, I got, I had the privilege of training uh, CNA students that were coming through that were doing their clinicals. And I got to be in that teacher role of teaching them. And I, and there were some students I had that realized when they were doing your clinicals, I said, the only stupid question here is the, is the question that doesn't get asked. So this is your time to ask questions and figure out if this is for you. I had some students that were like, gosh, I love this. And I want to go up the chain to be a nurse or a doctor someday. And then others were like, I can't do this. This isn't, isn't for me, but I would still tell them, I said, it's still good. looks good on your resume if you finish something. So, you know, still take that test. Get your certification. It's good for two years because even if something falls through the crack, cracks, you have that back to fall back on and it'll look good on your resume that you finished something. Okay. You 100%. never know. Yeah. But, you know, but it's still, but, you know, but it's, but it's not for everybody and that's okay. So if you're finding that caregiving for your loved one is too much for you, please seek help, whether that is looking at a nursing facility or in in incorporating home health or hospice or maybe assisted living. There's a lot of options out there and you do not have to do this alone, but that's, but that's where you have to start being open and start asking questions and yeah. being okay with looking at alternative avenues and being compassionate with yourself is like, wait, but wait, I, I told and promised my parents or grandparents or whoever that I would, I would do it all. And I would do it without, with, with, you know, with, without any help y'all, you can't do it by yourself. And yeah. there's only, and it's when you're in the thick of that situation that you realize what your capacity level is. And if you're finding your capacity level is tapped out and you can't do it, don't keep trying to push yourself through because that's going to lead to burnout, resentment, and a number, a whole can of worms of other problems. So be compassionate and, with yourself and be empathetic and with think, yourself. Yeah. And I think that idea of empathy, you know, I think the idea of empathy, this idea of like understanding the needs of other people is a, is a, I mean, for me as an entrepreneur, right? I don't know, over dozens of times a day, I'm having to evaluate customer needs, let's say client needs, whatever it might be in my day. So that same sort of um, thinking like that sort of, you know, giver mentality of trying to figure out what somebody needs right as an em in an empath empathic relationship it is the same as we are in dealing with the, those the people that we love and that we're caring for this idea that you know um building meaningful relationships building empathic relationships beginning with ourselves right um is really i think in terms of of all these skills, we rank them like in importance, but then we could rank them in um, oh gosh, purposefulness. Let's just call it that. I like that. And purposefulness. I, yeah, and I think that empathy, demonstrating the just being empathic, and the next one we have here is leadership. Gosh, being an empathic leader, um, that really to me translates to a purposeful life, not just as a um, entrepreneur, but as a caregiver. So I yeah. think that, I think these two go hand in hand, empath empathy and leadership, entrepreneurs that lead their teams. Caregivers also have to take charge. 
Gosh, Melissa, yeah. that one, Absolutely. you know, you know how it take it is to have to take charge. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, professionally, I would, I remember um, some of the best teams I worked with were the ones where we collaborate. So start of the shift, I'm getting report from my previous shift aid. So whether I worked all three shifts, so whatever shift it was, I'm there with my brain sheet, writing down notes for each, for each um, patient. So I know what's going on, getting up to speed. And my nurse is doing the same thing with her. She's getting the report from the last nurse or he, and then the best nurses I loved working with were the ones that would take five minutes with me. They're like, okay, Melissa, what do you got? What did, you, what did, they, what did they tell you? And I'd be like, okay, what did the nurse tell you? And we'd be powwowing and trying to figure out if the, and looking, taking five minutes to powwow and go, okay, um, Mr. Barnes here, you know, he, um, he's struggling and he hasn't been doing well. And the nurse is like, oh, wait a minute, I'm due to do a skin check on a day. What tag me, come get me when you're going in to do your rounds on him. So that way we're only bothering him and having to move him since he is not feeling well and in so much pain today once versus twice. So same thing as a caregiver for you, you know, how can you make it easier? Maybe it might be you, ha your loved one has two appointments and they're close together. Can you try to maybe coordinate to where you can get the times close to the same day? And maybe there's like, and you just have a lull of 30 minutes in between. So you're just doing one outing for the week versus two. Um, can you, um, as a caregiver, instead of trying to, uh, or with errands, another one I can think of is errands, you know, you need to go pick up the medications and the, and the, and the, um, and the, uh, medical supplies. Maybe that's the day you should get your groceries for the week. So you're only, so you're getting all those errands done in one day. So it's done and you have time for the rest of the week to focus your attention elsewhere. Same thing that is true that happens with us as business owners. You know, we try to maybe just have meetings on a certain day, and then we bust out um, working, up, batching out content a certain day on a certain on a certain day. Like this day, we only focus on emails. This day, we only focus on social media posts. The same skills apply. And through it all, I want you thinking about, too, with our last one, vision and passion. What is the vision you have? for your caregiving journey you know is are you I went in I knew going into my um caregiving journey with my husband obviously it's long term because you know it's like you know for love you know till death do us part and sickness and health with my dad he's like I don't want to be in a nursing facility either it's like well you know what you did it for mama by George I'm gonna do it for me and I ended up you know uh, with mom, we did do ho ho hospice and home health. Same thing with daddy. I had to incorporate hos uh, hospice and home health and it allowed me to do, I mean, I was also obviously very lucky because I could do a lot of ADL care on my own with being a former healthcare professional, but there were other aspects I needed. I'm not a PT person. I'm not an OT person. So I wanted those people coming in to assess daddy to see what kinds of equipment we needed to make sure he was safe when he would ambulate and when he would transfer. So what is the vision? Can you do it? Do you want to go in with the mindset of doing it long term, or do you have, or do you have a stopping point where it's going to time to be handled to hand over the baton? And how are you going to do that? And what does your loved one feel comfortable with that? Because think about it. With our businesses, we have the same mentality of like we're going for six figures, or we're trying to get this. this we have the vision of turning this program into Evergreen, or turning this program to become our sole focus eventually. Where you know, we hire a VA, VA and a team and someone else is dealing with the emails, the social media posts and we're and the bundles and summits. And we're solely focusing on coaching in the, our, our group and interacting with our clients. Okay. Same thing. So what is your vision? What is your passion? How long can you do yeah. this? And it's okay if it changes. Again, sometimes, you know, we go in thinking, oh, I can do this. I got this. But then you're in the thick of it. And it's like, dang, it's just too much. And then you have to change. But again, I want you to change than trying to push your pressure and push yourself through if you don't have the capacity to do. It. Yeah, and I think as an entrepreneurial entrepreneur, the entrepreneurial mindset really cannot be short term. Like when no. we talk about vision, um, we really do talk about like what is going on in five years? Like what do we see in five years? What do we see in 10 years? And be able to plan it because if we measure ourselves day to day or week to week or month to month and we kind of measure our progress and measure our goals and our trajectory toward our entrepreneurial and our caregiving goals that short period of time without seeing farther 
really can get us into what we call the gap, you know, how things were, how things we want them to be, and we're stuck in this gap. So if we increase our vision and we're able to see out farther, we really recognize that, um, that the moves and the actions that we're taking and commit to those actions to get us toward these longer range goals. It's the same thing as caregiving. And so I think for me, looking ahead to, you know, caregiving for my mother, for example, and planning ahead for my mom, you know, my mom's 86. Um, you know, some might say, well, she's not going to be long with us here. And I think to myself, well, I'm not going to plan that way. I am going to plan out five years so that I can see ahead and start to implement some strategies, some goals um, to help me as the caregiver plan ahead. And when I do that, I can take those steps to plan ahead. Um, so I'm not feeling like I'm always like rushing toward a goal. And I think that's important. And I think, you know, this idea, it's such a great, this topic of vision and passion, I think Melissa is such a, such a, compelling way to sort of wrap up our top 10, let's say, because having clear purpose, really having purposeful living as a caregiver, as an entrepreneur, that's what drives our life towards success. However you define success, but it's it certainly drives us toward happiness. It drives us toward success as a business owner, as a, a operator of business, as an entrepreneur. And it also drives us that, you know, having a clear purpose, having a passion, having a vision really does drive us toward fulfillment with our caregiving responsibilities also and rewards. And so I think that's um, so critically important. Before I forget to um, just sort of stepping back for one second on leadership. I do want to share um, that. So every month, I host a, um, a I host a webinar, a complimentary webinar called the Senior Living and Power Hour, and it's every month. You can check it out on the website and register. Um, last year, we were focused the whole year on enterprise risk management, but this year, and this is the reason I bring it up, well, also to invite everybody, but. Uh, this year, the topic, the focus for this year is leadership, organizational leadership. So, so many of the things were, you know, our March 27th is our next webinar. So, uh, and I have Erin Thompson joining us, which I'm really thrilled about um, because she's a coach in the senior living space for staff and she does an amazing job. And we often discuss service, um, sales, leadership. Those are all intersected with the role of the caregiver. And so, um, but this year our topic, our whole theme is leadership. So to the point of, you know, the importance of entrepreneurs leading their teams, caregivers taking charge of their caregiving teams. I think that that's um, just so critically important. So I welcome everyone to come and learn more from us too. So again, that's a resource, it's a support system. Um, I love most. that. I love that. And I love that you mentioned that's on the March 27th. That's when my next webinar is as well. <laughs> I love it. All now, right. Guys, I want you to go to both. So um, with mine, there is a replay. So please sign up. Um, my uh, workshop, Caregiving Basics 101, Understanding the Role of a Caregiver, is going oh, to be taught fantastic. live on Zoomer. Uh, on Zoom on Wednesday, March 27th at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, noon Eastern. And guys, since Rebecca has an event that I want you to go to, and I don't know what time her event is. One o'clock Central event. Time, so it's perfect. Yeah, Thank so go to my event, go to hers. But if that doesn't work in your schedule, because I know as business owners and entrepreneurs, we may already have stuff booked out for that day, at least still get a ticket from my event. And you can- Yeah, we'll tape ours. We'll tape ours. Yeah. We so we'll sign up for both of our events and watch the replay. So you can do it while you watch it. Guys, I lots of times when my daughter is napping, that's when I catch up on listening to just listening to stuff and educating myself. Or maybe when you're on a walk or you're washing the dishes or do it folding a load of laundry. Let's still listen to this stuff. Again, you can do habit stack. You can, you can, you can feed your mind, your body, your soul while you're doing the dishes, while you're doing house stuff. And I do want to, I do want to add this, that, you know, I really appreciated the opportunity to explore um, entrepreneurship 
and caregiving and the transfer between these different roles and these skill sets and this and just being able to emphasize the overlap here because in the end, it's really about how we can contribute to our, you know, where's the resilience, the achievement, you know, all of that. And I think that whether you're launching a business or you're caring for a loved one, all of these abilities, these top 10 we've talked about really do contribute to achieving our goals and, and, and manifesting that vision, manifesting that passion. So I'm really, um, I'm really excited about this topic. I, I'm yeah. so excited about having met with you and, and being able to really unpack these clearly. Yes, absolutely. And this, this conversation was so fun because it's a little different than the normal outline I do, but it was meant to be heard. I know this is going to help so many people. Oh, um, with the with their struggles of learning to be a caregiver when they've already been an entrepreneur but they're struggling about well how do I be a caregiver it just translates over so um our time is winding down Rebecca but before we go two things where can we find more Rebecca <laughs> oh my goodness well you thank you so much Melissa you can find more of me and and the resources in my the folks that I sort of hang around with on my end at one at my website, my law firm's website, which is www.edelmanfirm.com. So my last name, firm.com, edelmanfirm.com. Um, you can also uh, find, and you'll find my contact information there. You can also visit www.guidepath, G-U-I-D-E-P-A-T-H-L-L-C.com, guidepathllc.com. Guidepath is a... Um, a senior living um, certification and resource center that we are in the process of rolling out and creating. It's a fantastic set of resources there. So you can find me there. Um, and you can find me wherever Melissa is. How about that? <laughs> yes, guys, wherever you're watching this on Spotify, Apple, my website or my YouTube channel, all the information for connecting with uh, Rebecca will be below. And also the links to our upcoming events, which this is so cool. I've never had this before with the guests. Our events, you know, Rebecca's at on March 27th at 1 p.m. Central and mine at uh, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard. Come to our events, you know, sign up, get it, get, you know, sign up for our events. And if you can't, and give yourself that compassion. If you can't come live during the, the actual events, still sign up and listen. And then, connect with us afterwards tag me on instagram or facebook or youtube or shoot me an email i would love to still connect with you if there's something that comes up for you that you would like some help with we you know we can talk about it on a free call so all the information for that will be below guys thank you for listening to another exciting episode of the caregiving and entrepreneurship reimagined podcast if it's been great to have this conversation with rebecca and guys remember just give yourself some compassion Caregiving yeah. is hard. Entrepreneurship is hard, but you do not have to do it alone. And as your caregiver coach and business coach, I want to see, like Rebecca said, I don't want you just struggling. I want you thriving. I want you thriving. Yes. All right, guys. Rebecca, thanks again for your time. And I will see Thank you all you the next Thank you again, episode. Melissa. Thanks to everyone who's listening. I just had a blast. I appreciate it. All right. Take care, everyone. See you in the next one.